Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Today we are looking at Newton's second law of motion. And you must know your definition, which says if a resultant, in, in our case we don't say resultant, we say net force. If a net force is applied on an object, it will cause the body to accelerate in the direction of the force. The acceleration of the body will be directly proportional to the resultant force and inversely proportional to the mass of the body. The mathematical representation is F is equals to MA, and we must write it as F net is equals to MA. We say that A is directly proportional to F, meaning that if you apply a greater force on an object, there will be a greater acceleration. If you apply a smaller force, there will be a smaller acceleration. Then we can say A is inversely proportional to the mass provided that F is constant. So if we have a, uh, the same force, we have a person pushing, for example, a small car, then the acceleration will be a certain amount. But if he's pushing a larger car, then with the same force, the object will accelerate less, the acceleration will be smaller. So the greater the mass, the smaller the acceleration. The greater the force, the greater the acceleration. And that is mathematically explained by the equation F net is equal to MA. And this net is very important. Now to look at an example, say we have an object, here's an object of mass, say three kilograms. And we apply a force of 15 Newtons onto this object of three kilograms. And we see that there's a force here and this will be our frictional force and say our frictional force is 10 Newtons. Then if you look at our net force, our net force is actually our applied force minus our frictional force. And our applied force is 15 Newtons and our frictional force is 10 Newtons and 50 minus 10 gives us 40 Newtons as our net force. So if we look at this diagram, we can say that our net force, if we want to work out our acceleration, we say F net is equals to MA and our net force is 40 Newtons and the mass of the object is 3 kilograms and we need to work out acceleration. And if we divide by 3 both sides, we see that 40 divided by 3 will give us 13,3. So we can say here that 13,3 meters per second per second is the acceleration of this object and this object will move to the right because we are taking a right as positive. So this 3 kilogram object will, uh, will accelerate to the right at 13,3 meters per second squared. Now, to take it a little further, we may have a case where the applied force is not horizontal or in the same direction of the motion. It's at an angle to the motion. So here we got an angle of 60 degrees. And say we are applying a force of 100 Newtons. So <clears throat> assume that there's no friction or it doesn't matter whether there's friction or not. Let's just see what our F applied will come to in this case. So we see that in here, in this case, that uh, because the object is moving from left to right, we have to work out the horizontal component of our applied force. So to do that, we see that here's the object theta, this will be the opposite, that will be the adjacent, and this will be our hypotenuse. So if we say adjacent of our hypotenuse, we say that cos theta is equals to the adjacent over our hypotenuse. So in our case, we have cos of 60 degrees is equals to the adjacent side, or we can say horizontal component of, a, uh, of applied force over our hypotenuse, which is 100 Newtons. So our adjacent will be 100 cos 60 degrees. And we can see here that if we say cos 60 degrees times 100, which gives us 15 Newtons. 
will be our adjacent. So in actual fact, the applied force that's pulling this trolley front will be 50 newtons and not 100 newtons. And you may need that in certain sums that you can do. You can even learn it. Uh, horizontal component is equals to F cos theta, which comes to the same thing. If you look at our case, our F is 100 times cos of 60 degrees, and it will give you 50 newtons. But this is the understanding of how they got that. So that's important that when we're looking at the force, the force must be in the direction of the motion. By taking it a little further now, if we have a diagram here, and they ask us to calculate T, what is T? And we've given two forces, and we will assume that there is no friction. So we don't have friction in our diagram. And they're asking us to calculate the tension of the string that's connecting the two blocks. So in order to do that, what we will have to do is work out two diagrams. So we must work out a diagram for the 10 kilogram object, and we must work out a diagram for the 15 kilogram object. So looking at our 10 kilogram object, we can see that we have our 10 kilogram object and if you look at it on its own, what force is acting on it? You see that the force acting on it is only T. And we can say, according to our equation, F net is equal to MA. Then if you look at this diagram, that our net force, the only force acting on it is T is equal to MA, and our mass is 10, and we don't have our acceleration. Now, if we have to draw a diagram for the 15 kilogram block, we'll see that we have our 15 kilogram block here. And what is pulling the 15 kilogram block directly? We see that it is the 500 Newton force. that's pulling it forward. And T is pulling it backwards. So if you have to write down F net is equals to MA, and if we have to use it for this, we will see that it will be 500 minus T is equals to 15 A. So this is very important that we break down our diagram into two uh, pieces, or if there's three blocks, even three pieces. And we write down the F net is equals to MA directly for the block that is applied, and we can come down to this. Now, when we see this here, we see that T is equals to 10 A. So we call this equation one and we can call this equation two and if we substitute equation one into equation two what we can say is we get 500 minus what is t equal to 10a so we say 10a is equals to 15a and this becomes 500 is equals to, if you take the minus 10a on the other side, we get 25a. And then if you divide both sides by 25, we'll see a is equals to 500 divided by 25, which is equals to 20 meters per second. Now we've got our acceleration of the motion. And as I told you, we had to calculate t and now we can substitute A in either equation 1 and equation 2. But equation 1 looks easier. We know that T is equals to 10A. So we can say 10, and our acceleration is 20. 20 times 10 will give you 200 newtons. So this is a simple uh, sum relating to Newton's second law, where we have a 500 Newton force that is pulling both objects, and we see that the ideal way to do it is to break up the diagram into two with the forces acting on the object, and then in so doing, we can work out the sum. To check the sum, just to check that it is correct, we can say F is equals to MA. If there is no friction, just remember there must be no friction because it can be uh, confusing when there is friction, although you can do it with friction. Our masses are 15 plus 10 uh, is 25. 
and our force is 500 and we want to work out A so 500 divided by 25 A is equals to 500 divided by 25 and that will be 20 meters per second so this is a way to check that our acceleration is correct and then from there we can do our substitution to get our answer relating to T. So I will stop there and uh, uh, this is a, a simple uh, example that you can get relating, relating to Newton's second laws. Thank you very much for watching.